Hey, this is Jeremy. I thought I'd uh, do a quick little video and uh, show you guys a little something about our glue barrels. So uh, we want to set you up for success. We want to make sure that you guys get these things installed correctly. And so for here's, here's for example, one of our 18 inch arm barrels in 556. And uh, starting off, what, what we need to do is we get our receiver and this is, this is an easy way of doing this get a couple of blocks of wood and sandwich your receiver in a vise. And, and the reason for the wood is that we don't wanna put tool marks onto the side of the receiver. And we wanna cheat up on the front trunnion here. We wanna get, uh, just barely have this sticking out the side. And that, that makes sure that we get as much, as much meat in here as possible uh, when we're installing that. A lot of guys, when you're doing stamp receivers and everything, and you go and put these in the vise, you go and torque them down and you end up, uh, you know, kind of, Dinting in your canoe, so then when you wind up uh, riveting your trunnions in and stuff, you end up uh, you know installing it that way and inducing that problem with your receiver and getting it out of uh, from being straight anymore. So a lot of a lot of the meat, as much meat as we can in that front trunnion. Another thing uh, for our threads, uh, I like to put some copper guard in there. Uh, just don't put it in dry. You know what I'm saying? Um, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get this going. Now we have the flats here on our barrel. Got our flats. And the whole, the whole point of this is so that you can use the three quarters um, uh, slot on your AR armor's wrench. So, and then we have this this fun little uh, uh, square cut out there. That is your drive that you can use for your, uh, for your torque wrench. So we've got that set up there. And I wanna see, let's see, yeah, I think that's, but that's a good way to go. And we can do this, we can do that, you know, kind of by hand. Torque wrench. So I've heard some people say 120, uh, we tend to do, uh, I think, 130 to 150 foot-pounds. We keep ours uh, started at 130 foot-pounds. And so we place our torque wrench into our AR Armors wrench. And there again, let's do this again. Because before you ever torque anything, you want to verify that, that your torque setting is correct but we never, honestly, we never move it. So we set that up. Set this up. There we go. I want that aligned if I can. And then we're gonna, and then we're gonna torque this bad boy until it clicks. Hold it a sec. And we'll let off. Now, we're not done. Now we want to take our, uh, we just use a giant crescent wrench, but we want to break this free now. Whenever you put your, if you're using an adjustable wrench, make sure that uh, you take up any slack. So go ahead and adjust it and make sure that it's, it's, it's good and snug. And that's going to help you uh, help keep from, uh, number one, inducing tool marks onto the metal. Even though that this is nitrided, uh, it's super hard. You know, it's got a thin candy shell from the chem chemical process. Uh, but, you know, we want to take care of it the best that we can. And I'm going to break this free. <clears throat> okay. Set that up again. And, and what we're doing here is, is we're working these threads in. We're going to do this three times. So, same, same. Set this up, get it nice and snug. Okay. And I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding this together so it doesn't slip off just in case. Okay. Hold it. Let it off. That's number two. Oh, 
All right. So now, third and final time, I'm going to give our vise another tighten. Third and final time, this is going to be our final torque. This is where we're saying, okay, we are good to go. Feel good about that. So now, take this out of our blocks. The wood hasn't uh, induced any or uh, uh, produced any tool marks onto our receiver. And now we have a torqued barrel, torqued to spec, that is installed into our receiver. From here, we need to force match the bolt. We design these barrels that you purposefully have to force match the bolt. They are slightly oversized to ensure that when you force match that bolt, much like bolt action, um, when you force match that bolt, it will uh, you can get a perfect headspace. If we didn't do that and you install that, you can end up with too much headspace. Uh, your bolt's too sloppy and it's flopping around there. Nobody likes a floppy bolt. So uh, from, from there, we're going to make another video teaching you how to force match your Galil bolt. Get it to a perfect head, head space. Any questions or anything like that, hit me up in the comments. Like, comment, share, follow.